Couldn't start that. So this is the the Cran family. Yeah, that's the Cran family. Yeah, and you said this was your mother. That's my mother. Yeah, your great grandmother. And then go ahead. You can. Should I? Read? Yeah, you can pick that up. I think this one will come in. Yeah, that comes in just fine. Mm -hmm. And then that is you and Grandma. Yeah, we were, that's our baby pictures. And I don't need don't, to don't hold that like that. Or? No, we're. I think we're okay. Mm -hmm. And then I, I don't need to guess. I know which one is which. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Wow. But um, just, I'd like to explain a few things about that picture to you. Yeah, yeah. Should we set it back down? Yeah. yeah. Here, we can set it down, and then if you want to point anything okay. out. Yeah. I, I will be okay with, with the glare. Let me sit down it's, here. Yeah, go right ahead. Yeah. Obviously, this is my grandmother, mm -hmm. Grandmother Cran, that we lived with when I was in high school. And this is my grandfather here, Grandfather Cran. And he was a, a businessman. He was a mayor of the town that they were raised in, Rolf, Iowa. That's R-O-L-F-E. And he, he, was a, he ran a general store. And he would go on buying trips into Chicago and everything to replenish his inventory and mm. so on. And he was quite a businessman there and uh, with that general store. And this is the oldest uh, person in the family, Aunt Margaret. And uh, she was always a tough one. Uh, she, she would make you toe the mark real hard. Uh, when we <laughs> lived with her, boy, you had to really be <laughs> on your best behavior all the time and my mother was a second oldest right there and uh, she was just just a sweet lady as far as I can remember and this is Mrs. Reen, Nellie Reen right there mm -hmm. and that's the one that had the seven children that lived upstairs from us uh, okay. in uh, Owain there. Uh, this is right here is Esther Feld she married a dentist, and they had five children. They were all her cousins. Some of them are they're living today. And this is, they called her Noni, Noni Cusack. And uh, she married, uh, they never had children. This is Grace. Your mother would remember her, because they always visited us in Chicago when we lived there. And, uh, uh, she married a, a lawyer, Grace Sanford, Harold Sanford was his name. And this is uh, an uncle of mine, Clement was his name. And he was, he was a businessman, an old wine there, and what he did most of his life was uh, sell monuments uh, for cemeteries and so on. That was his main job. Huh. Yeah. But I never knew my grandfather at all. He died as a young man when all those children were young and they all lived in Rolf, Iowa, which uh, Rolf was a town of about 12 to 1500 people and he was a merchant there. And then uh, when he passed on, my grandmother, uh, her maiden name was McSweeney and all of the McSweeney family lived around Owain in northeastern Iowa and she moved the whole family to uh, Owain uh -huh. to be closer to her family. Okay. And that's how we ended up there. I guess otherwise we'd have been out in central Iowa or there So that's, or that's where my Irish comes from. That's where your Irish comes from. These are all solid Irish people, John. <laughs> now, did, did, they, did they emigrate over to the U.S. or did they have... Uh, no, their ancestors, their ancestors did. Ancestors. I, I would imagine it probably happened in the potato famine of the 1840s or mm, something like that. Sure. You know? Yeah. Okay. But uh, they were all born right here in the United States. Uh, the McSweeney's were quite prominent in uh, a little town called Westgate, Iowa, which is about 8 or 10 miles from Owain. Uh, hmm. And uh, they were farmers and merchants and so on around the little town of Westgate. Margaret never married, and uh, 
she was kind of the leader of the family. Uh, she was a she was a tough one. She would her and I would have some tough times, <laughs> but she she was good to us and she. As a matter of fact, she bought us our first radio. We never had a radio when we were kids. Can you imagine that? Wow. We didn't have a radio at all. And one day we we're all sitting there at home, and up comes Margaret. She's walking, and she's got a little box in her hand, and comes into our house and sets it up and plugs it up, and it was a little radio about like that. <laughs> you know, that was the first radio we ever had. <laughs> Wow. And Margaret did that. She was always good to us, but she was stern and tough, <laughs> and you had to toe the mark. And she was an ex-school teacher. My mom was an ex-school teacher, too, and so was Nellie Reen. They were ex-school teachers, and they taught in country schools. And as a matter of fact, they used to tell me that they would ride in a horse and buggy to their schools every day, and uh, they, the three of them would go out and... Uh, drop off the first one and then they go to the next school and drop off the second one and the last one would take the was furthest out the buggy and horse there and and hook it up to the end of the school day and then she'd come back and pick them all up to bring them all at night <laughs> didn't have cars in those days john yeah. can you imagine that wow. there were probably cars around but not everybody had a car no well day. in i don't know I don't know how mo old your mom was when she was running that grocery store in Oline, but, you know, I imagine... Well, my mother married late in life. As a matter of fact, um, she was 38 years old when she married. Oh, wow. And she okay. was 40 when she had me. Wow. Yeah, so she was pretty old. So then if she was teaching in her 20s, then that would have been the early 1900s. Yeah, that's about right. Yeah. No, she graduated from high school. As a matter of fact, I had books here. And in this move that we just made, somehow I lost those books. But she used to have little books that were uh, nice stories of that day and period. And they were given to her as a graduation gift from different people around town there. Hmm. Uh, and, uh, and it had in there, Happy Graduation Mary, that was her name. <laughs> And it was dated 1904. That's when she graduated from high school. It was 1904, wow. and they gave her books and so on, <coughs> and uh, as graduation gifts. And she always kept those books, and I kept them too. And when we made this last move, I don't know what the heck happened to them. Anyway, they're gone. But they were just nice little books of stories, you know, and so on. Uh, yeah, bound in uh, nice little book covers for what was common in that period and that day and so mm -hmm. on. And I wish I had those books, but we lost them in this last move. Yeah. So I don't know what happened to them. But this was a very close-knit family. Yeah. This guy and his wife died in a uh, uh, automobile accident in about 1956. They, I don't know how it happened, but anyway, they was a crash situation and they were both were killed. Uh, all the rest of them pretty much lived to old age. Cool. They all lived old. Nellie lived a long time. Her family uh, was always a close-knit family and always took care of her and Clem lived oh well into his 80s and so on. Wow. And all, all of them did. Margaret lived quite a long time too. They all did. Grace uh, was the youngest, and she died, uh, oh, I would say um, probably close to the year 2000. You know, she was right away. And my mother was the first to die. She died in 1946 when I was overseas. So that's how that worked out. But she was still well into her 50s then at that point. Coming close to her 60s. When? When she passed? Oh, no, my mother died at 60. Yeah, yeah. right at 60, her 60th yeah. birthday. As a matter of fact, her birthday was March 12th, and she died a week after March 19th. Hmm. That's when she died, at 60. That's where she was. And that's when I was over in Japan. But she was 40 when she had me, so... Uh, um, she really 
had quite a life, but she was a very well-liked person around town there, and uh, uh, she could visit with anybody. She had a very well-rounded sense of business. She ran this grocery store and everything, and gave credit to people, and and uh, she was a she was a good businesswoman. My mother mm -hmm. was. Very good. All the salesmen that come to sell her the groceries and so on always respected her and she knew what she was doing and what she wanted and so on and she was a she was a very good businesswoman. But uh that's the Irish side of the family right there. Oh. Mm -hmm. They're quite the crowd. <laughs> But Margaret, she was the tough one. <laughs> she, she was probably only tough on you, Greg. Well, you and, probably and, caused her all the trouble. Well, probably, I probably <laughs> was. But she, she meant well. She really did. And I always respected her when I would go on trips and everything after my mother died and everything. I always let Margaret know that she was kind of my second mother. And I would always write her letters and so on when I was on business trips. Like I'd go up to Sioux City and I'd have to stay overnight in the evening, I always would write my Aunt Margaret a letter. And we had all my kids then were babies, you know, and not even in grade school or even anything. And you know, whenever I went to Sioux City, I would write her a letter to let her know how everything was going with us and that sort of thing. And outside of, uh, you know, going back to visit, I would always go back to a wine, always considered to be my hometown. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, uh, Margaret I had a lot of respect for because she helped my mother out so much when she was having her tough days. And uh, my mother, uh, Margaret, was always there to help. And we, re we really needed it in those days. But anyway, that's kind of my life, John. <laughs> Well, I we graduated high. Oh, did I show you my high school graduation class? Uh, no. I'll get that out. All right. I got that. Please, was please right do. Back. If you're through with that, I'll take it back. Yeah. Unless you want to keep it. We'll put it. We'll put it up one more time. <coughs> Grandpa and Grandma. Yeah. Infants. <laughs> <laughs> Troublemakers. That's right. <laughs>